Between Games, supporting community sport. Proudly brought to you by Gibb Sport. My name is Gene Perini, and it's my great pleasure to bring back our Between Games show that for some of you that might remember was uh, originated back in 2015 and was created by our former colleagues, Chris Stanlake and Dave Roberts. I'm joined by Gibb Sport's very own Brenton Dinsdale. Welcome to you, Brenton. Yeah, thanks, Gene. Uh, certainly pumped and excited to be part of the revival of Between Games. Uh, like a lot of people, we're currently working from home and remotely due to the current COVID-19 situation. So perfect time for us to bring back the show. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, obviously, we certainly need to acknowledge Dave and Chris. Um, we've dedicated to them. We've kept the original intro and music um, and we hope they're listening and uh, they get a little bit nostalgic about it. Uh, as you mentioned, um, we've certainly experienced unusual times at the moment. Um, everyone's been impacted, including our, our community sports clubs. Um, just a bit of history about the show, when, when, when Chris and Dave had it going. Uh, it was designed back then to support community sport and it was another avenue for development and um, ways that club volunteers could access information. Um, and we just thought it was really relevant at the moment with what's happening that, um, yeah, we get the show back up and going and um, provide some important support to Clubland. Yeah, absolutely, Gene. It's um, obviously a pretty challenging time for our local Gippsland clubs. Uh, many of our clubs are such important social hubs for their local communities, particularly small and remote communities across uh, Gippsland. And, yeah, like I say, it was um, – probably challenging times as well that a lot of the summer clubs were getting towards finals or the end of finals and grand finals and they had to stop their season and winter clubs such as your football netball soccer etc were just about to to get going for the year yes look so in today's show we're going to look at how kit sport can support your club during this time and then we're going to be joined by um our colleague ryan evans who works in sale but he's also the president of the Boysdale and Pragalong Footy Nipple Club. So we're going to touch base with him and see um, how he's been personally affected and, um, yeah, just see how life as a president's changed in this time. Um, Brenton, you're a keen sportsman. Footy, golf, cricket, I've heard it all before. Um, <laughs> how's it all impacted you, mate? Yeah, I'm a gun at all of those. You know that. Uh, I can tell you that. But uh, yeah, it's had a pretty big impact for sure on, on my personal life and also family life as well because um, I'm a coach and, and player at Hayfield Footy Netball Club and have been for many years. And we should be coming into about round four, I think it is um, at the moment, or round five. So obviously we're not training, um, not catching up with mates on a Tuesday, Thursday night, and then then playing and enjoying um, maybe a social beer afterwards on a Saturday. So, yeah, certainly missing that side of things, not seeing my mates, not catching up. Uh, yeah. Also for my family, you know, I was a day out at the footy as well. Got three young kids and they could catch up with their young friends as well and my wife could catch up with her friends at the footy and make a day of it. So, yeah, it's had a, had a massive impact. Um Another thing, I guess, too, is my older son, who's five. Um, yep. He did Auskick for the first time last year, so that was really good for him to, not, not, I guess, learn some new skills, but that's not what it's all about. It's just having some fun, having a bit of a run around, and at that age, making making some new friends, particularly when you're about to go to school. So he can't do that at the moment as well, which is um, a bit disappointing. Yeah, and no, I certainly halt to, um, you know, well, our weekends and what we did, you know, during sport. Um, out in the field and the courts and all of that. Um, is there something sports-wise in the last few weeks that you may have done because of the coronavirus that, you know, if it hadn't come along, you may not have? Um, an example for me is um, my son and I are completing the online referees course. Um, his local team that he plays for have, have asked him to do it. So I've always wanted to do it. So we've been going through the laws of a game and, you know, um, learning about the, um, the all the different rules. And there's, there's quite a few there that you know, we actually um, didn't know about or weren't interpreting correctly. So when we were arguing with the referee, we we're actually wrong. Um, so that's been really good. Is there anything like that for you over the last little while that you've done? Well, before I answer that question, you shouldn't be arguing with the referees and umpires. They are there to do their best. But, um, yeah, I know, I know what you mean. It's <laughs> on the odd occasion. On the odd yeah, occasion. That's okay. Competitive juices. Um, yeah, I guess for me, 
with having three young kids, they're, they're five, nearly three and one. So uh, as soon as I get home from work, uh, I am working remotely, not actually from home. So when I do get home from work, we quickly duck outside and we're pretty lucky. We've got some good space out in the backyard. So they've got footy goals set up. There's cricket. There's a trampoline to do some gymnastics and that sort of stuff. There's a swing set. They can jump around rather than jumping on the couches inside. Um, and there's also great opportunities to still participate in your traditional type sports. So for us with the kids, it's AFL, cricket, gymnastics on the swing set and trampoline, totem tennis, having some pretty intense games of totem tennis at the moment. And yeah, right. my weak, weak backhand's getting a work over from my youngest. But And also we've set up a golf hole out in the backyard so they can still practice their traditional sports, obviously not in a, in a structured sense. So, yeah, getting my sporting fix that way, just having a bit of a muck around out in the backyard, which has been good. And also, you know, staying physically active is really important at this, this time as well. So try and do as much of that as possible. Sounds like the mini Olympics over there, mate. It is the mini Olympics. <laughs> I'm um, I'm lucky at the moment because I'm a lot older than my kids, so I'm winning most things, but I do have to throw the odd game. Otherwise, they throw tantrums. So a few there's gold a lot medals. of... A few gold medals. Yeah. yeah. I'm always silver, unfortunately, but that's okay. <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess for you, Jan, you've had an illustrious soccer career that the whole Gip Sport team's you know, heard and learnt about. I've never seen you play, so I can't comment on that, but... I'll go with your word, uh, but how has this affected you, mate? Obviously, you can't play soccer at the moment, for example. Well, um, yeah, you haven't seen me, so you probably wouldn't describe it as illustrious if you had. Um, yeah, look, it's an interesting time for me. Um, you know, um, obviously, we can't play at the moment. I'm in my 40s, so, you know, when you hit this age, every pre-season, you start questioning whether you're going to continue. So, um, we're ready to, to go. So, um, I'd sort of done a pre-season. So, um, yeah, was going to play. So it'd be interesting to see once, once the, I guess, if we do get a winter season, whether I decide to play. Um, I've certainly missed the social side of things and, you know, training and playing with my mates. So, um, yeah, we, we've um, – obviously, we, we, we can't get together and play, but one thing we've committed to each other is um, on a Thursday night when we usually train, we're doing – we've got the house party app, so we've committed to – a few of us anyway, to dial in and have a chat and just share share how the week's gone and what we're up to. So that's been really good for us um, just to do that. Also, um, my son plays for Gippsland FC, who's an NPL soccer team, and they they got six or seven games in at the start of the year. So um, he they managed to videotape them. So they've been sent the games and they're having to do video analysis on their game and the team's performance. So that's been interesting. We've we probably wouldn't have done that um, if um, we weren't in the current situation. So, and he's uh, 13, so lots of made-up games, a bit like yourself in the backyard, where we're um, using our creativity. So, yeah, no, that's been really good. So, Brenton, before we speak to Ryan, um, can you tell us what Gip Sports doing at the moment in regards to club support? Yeah, certainly, Gene. I guess the message we want to get across to our Gippsland sporting community is that we are available and still working at full capacity at the moment. We are working from home and, and remotely and spread out across all of Gippsland, but the main message is there that we are available to, to chat to you one-on-one, -on -one, whether that's online, could be a phone call or an email. There's clubs and inquiries we're getting at the moment around, I guess, future planning for you know, if restrictions do ease, what can our club do to, to get back up and running and get people physically active? Probably like what we've touched on just briefly there around catching up with your mates and that mental health side of things. We want to make sure that we are yep. staying connected. And I think clubs, uh, the proactive clubs are um, certainly talking about that and wanting to get people involved and, and back playing their sport that they love. So we have a, a whole range of information and resources on our website. So people can check out www.gipsport.com.au. That on our homepage, you can't really miss it. There's a, a lot of different tabs and information there that you can click on what might be relevant to your club or association or just gaining some, some information um, that you may not know about. And I guess, as we know, information has been changing very rapidly. For, for a while there, it was basically every hour of the day there was some more news coming through. So... Um, at the moment, it's probably, a, you know, daily there's changes with every press conference or media release that comes out. So we are trying to keep that as up to date as, as we possibly can. There's also an email 
which is um, COVID-19 at gipsport.com.au. And we're asking clubs and associations who maybe have some queries or issues to email us their, their thoughts and their feedback. And we want to use that information to, I guess, guide us in the direction of our plans that we're currently looking at. So it might be some un- online workshops to say, you know, we've had four or five clubs bring up the same issue and same feedback. So we might then go and do an online workshop that clubs can can log in and listen to. So any thoughts and feedback, any queries, we may not have the, the answer straight away because it is information is rap- rapidly changing, but we'll do our best to find out as soon as we can. We'll get back to you, um, yeah, as, as soon as possible. Uh, thanks, Brenton. Now, the message is clear. If, if you're a volunteer and have a query regarding your club, make contact with us at Kip Sport. And, um, yeah, we'll as the situation changes, we'll, we'll do our best to um, advise and support clubs. So now it's the exciting time. It's um, time to chat with our first guest. It's another member of uh, Kip Sport team, Ryan Evans. Ryan is based in our sale office and, as the background suggests, uh, he's not only a program coordinator, but he's also the president of the Boys Dale Baragalong Footy Nipple Club. How are you going, Ryan? Yeah, well, thanks, fellas. Glad to be here for the revival of Between Games again. Could be a part of it. So, mate, uh, we know work for you has changed, like all of us working from home and um, trying to do what we can uh, remotely. But life as a president uh, must be like a different world at the moment. Can you give us an insight on how much has changed? Yeah, certainly. It's Changed dramatically with the delayed start of the 2020 season. Uh, normally at this time of year, I'd be heavily involved with the day-to-day function of the club, uh, ensuring everything's in place for training and games to go ahead each week, uh, managing club operations, including cash flow and coordinating volunteers. Obviously, with social isolation restrictions in place and trainings and games on hold, a lot of that is currently not happening. Um, that being said, though, there are a number of areas in which I do continue to work with a variation in some of those activities that we're normally doing at this time of year. Um, Three of the key areas which I'm currently focused on and which I would recommend other club presidents consider is ongoing communication strategies, uh, sponsorship and revisiting budgets or preparing budgets if you haven't already um, for a season which we likely is going to be very different than what we've seen before. Okay, oh, Ryan, it's uh, Brenton here, your colleague from the sale office, but we haven't seen each other for a while. No, it's uh, been a while. Yeah, it's been great. You've just mentioned three key areas which should remain a focus for clubs, and some clubs may not be thinking about that at the current time. Um, are you able to elaborate a little bit on those three? Yeah, absolutely. I think it is something that all clubs need to consider if they haven't already. The first one I mentioned was communication strategies, and obviously club members are unable to congregate together under the current restrictions, so club personnel should be communicating with their members and other stakeholders via available media platforms. So so things such as Facebook, uh, club websites, electronic newsletters, um, even your printed community newsletters. I have. I know we have one out of Boys Dark or The Bridge, which gets mailed out each week, so any, any options you've got to put out, um, certainly use those. Uh, keeping your members updated with what's going on is paramount, um, as well as providing COVID-19 updates in regards to community sport. Um, you can also be doing things such as posting player profiles or, or historical items and links to past claims that might be um, on. Um, you've talked about house party apps. I like that, getting everyone involved together so you're still kind of sticking together as a club. Um, you can also live stream mock selections or suggested train activities that players can do while in isolation. The main thing really is just to keep people invested in the club. Um, the other thing you could be doing is promoting your sponsors via the media platforms that you have available. Probably those particularly who are experiencing economic hardship during COVID-19 pandemic. So um, restaurants, pubs, um, any of your sponsors which are, which are battling away just to make ends meet, now's your time to look after your sponsors. It's actually a perfect segue, Ryan, because that was my next, next question was around sponsorship because it might be a bit of a tricky one, particularly when – there's no games and seasons going ahead. So if you wouldn't mind just elaborating a little bit more on sponsorship in particular. Yeah, sure. So sponsorship is a big one. Um, this is a space where, where clubs need to be acting now. Um, I know the season's not going ahead at this stage, but you really need to be talking to your sponsors. Um, normally at this time of year, I'd be chasing up sponsorship. Um, but obviously that's hard to do at this point in time because we don't know what the season's going to look like and we certainly don't know really what we can offer them. Um, so the most important thing right now is to be communicating, um, particularly with those sponsors who've paid already. Um, touch base and check what they could do or what you'd like, or what they would like you to do regarding their sponsorship arrangement. Um, is there anything you can be doing right now to give them value for their money? 
Um, for example, if doing a mock selection or other activity on a Thursday night, maybe you can start with an introduction. This Thursday's mock selection is brought to you by the team at the Brygalong Hotel. Save yourself from having to cook tonight and head down there and grab yourself a takeaway meal available every night of the week. Um, that's just an example. You also will be contacting your current and previous sponsors to let them know uh, that there's going to be changes to available packages when the season does start and details are confirmed um, and these will be made available to potential sponsors. And as I mentioned earlier, just make sure that you're promoting the interests of your sponsors via your available media channels. Look after your sponsors as best you can in the current circumstances. Yeah, that's really good advice, Ryan, because sponsors are probably doing it tough as well, especially if they're not operating at full capacity at the moment or not operating at all. It's yeah important that we, we keep them in the back of our minds. Uh, you also mentioned budgeting. Budgeting is a, a tough one as well, and particularly when you don't know what's going to happen. Um, how can clubs budget at the moment for, for a continuation of the season or of a start of the season if it happens? Yeah, good question. Um, budgeting for a season, which we're not even sure how it's going to look like, um, it's a difficult one. Uh, my advice is plan for the best case scenario and prepare for the worst. Um, if the season does go ahead, it's likely it's going to look vastly different than those that have run before it. Um, how long will it run for? Um, we don't know. Will crowds be allowed? Um, will previous sponsors still have available funds to support the club? Um, can everyone afford memberships? Have people lost their work? Is it going to be hard for them? Um, what should we change for memberships given that it's going to be a shorter season? But some of those costs, such as play insurance, they're not going to change. Um, I think that we all have to go into the coming season if it goes ahead expecting far less revenue than years past, unfortunately. Um, and clubs need to be preparing for this now. You just can't wait. Um, what other sources of revenue are there? What can you investigate now while, while we've got some pause time? Um, how can costs be minimised? Um, clubs just can't go into the season thinking that it's going to be business as usual. It won't be. Um, having half a season does not mean you're only going to, you're going to get half the revenue. You won't. Be prepared. Things are going to be a little bit harder this year. Um, so what strategies can you put into place, you know, that are going to keep your, your club financially afloat? Um, if you need some help with this, you know, feel free to contact contact me or speak to anyone at the Gibbs Sport team. Um, certainly can help you in this situation. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Your insights into, um, yeah, your role at the club, um, yeah, really interesting. We, um, I've seen a few examples out in the community which uh, reinforce what you've said. One example, one club was promoting um, that their local coffee shop was still open and, you know, who was a local sponsor and that uh, people should get it down there and grab a takeaway. Um, another club through social media, like you mentioned, was still engaging with their members and putting up um, old photos, that, you know, when when the club formed, um, you know, um, promoting past history. Um, and, you know, I think the message is if, if we can keep our uh, members engaged in this time, when we restart, it'd be a good opportunity for them to, to take up the sport again. So Absolutely. thanks so much. No worries at all. Glad I didn't you. realise that it was the um, you were the Bombers as a Carlton man. I don't know if I could have asked <laughs> you to come on. Uh, the Mighty Fighting good. Bombers. And, yeah, look forward to fly again. Thanks so much. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Well, Brenton, that's a wrap for our first episode. Um, I found it really interesting um, to hear, you know, how heavily impacted sport is, but – there's it's, there's an uplifting side of what things people are doing and you know your examples um with the, with the children in the back garden and evo's um examples you know what he's trying to do at the club so um in this time when you know we're we're uncertain about what's going to happen there's some there's some stories out there that are providing a bit of hope so yeah that's right that's certainly yeah weird times in in the sports land but also in the world at the moment so um, as time progresses, we'll we'll look to provide support and advice to the the Gippsland sports community. Um, but it's been great to be a part of the revival of Between Games, and hopefully we've done our former colleagues Chris and David proud. I'm sure they'll be smiling as they um as they listen and watch this. So yeah, it's great to be a part of it. Um, certainly, still a lot happening across Gippsland, and and great to hear that people can still stay physically active. Yeah, and look, we're really keen to get feedback. Um, future webinars, topics that people want to, um, you know, have discussed and we can get, you know, guests in. So please contact Gipsport um, on, you know, over the email that's um, the, the COVID-19 email that Brenton 
uh, promoted earlier or um, you know, pick up the phone. We've got Facebook, lots of different mediums that we, we want to connect with people. And um, yeah, just try and um, make topics relevant as the situation changes and, and things evolve and we get back to playing sport. So um, until our next episode of Between Games, stay safe, make sure you keep active in, in whichever way you can. Thank you. For more information on Between Games, visit www.gipsport.com.au. Between Games is supported by Vic Health and the Department of Health and Human Services. Gipsport, supporting community sport.